In lesson four, we'll be reviewing the distributive property and solutions of equations. Let's review what the distributive property means. If we had this expression, two times three plus four. There's a couple of ways that we could simplify that. We could add what's inside the parentheses first, and then we would have two times seven equals 14. Or we could distribute the two over the three and the four. That's the, the distributive property. We take the two, multiply it by the three, and we get six. Then put a plus sign, and we do the two multiplied by the four, and we get an eight. Six plus eight equals 14. Either way, we get the same answer. And so if we think of the distributive property just in terms of variables, we can say a times b plus c. That equals a times b. And there's always a plus sign between steps. Then we do a times c. a b plus a c. Now that word that I have in red up there, expand. When you see a relationship where you have a value on the outside of parentheses and then a sum on the inside and it says expand, that's what you do is you use the distributive property. So look at practice problem A. Let's expand that relationship. And so that means we'll take the 3a squared over b and we multiply it by each term on the inside of the parentheses. So we say 3a squared over b times b squared. And that would give us 3a squared b squared over b, everything over b, and then plus 3a squared over b times the negative 7x. We have to think of the negative in front of that 7x as well. So times a negative 7x. And then usually I work my problems vertically, but I'm running out of room here, so I'll move over to the right. And I'll say 3a squared b squared over b b squared over b would just simplify to a single b and so we'll have 3 a squared b and then our next term remember the order of the values doesn't matter the order of the factors does not matter we have 3 times a squared times a negative 7 times x so let's get the constants the 3 and the negative 7 together and that would make a negative 21 and so we'll have minus 21 a squared x over b. And so that's the expanded form of that expression. Let's do one more. Let's expand this relationship here. 5x to the fifth y over z to the zero. Now z to the zero is one, right? Anything to the power of zero is one. So we can just consider that a one there. And so now let's go ahead and multiply. 5x to the fifth y will multiply the numerator of that outside fraction by the numerator of the inside and then we'll multiply denominator by denominator. 5x to the fifth y and that would make it 5x to the seventh y to the negative 2. We can just go ahead and do our multiplication. x to the fifth and x to the second that would give us x to the seventh y to the 1 and y to the negative 3 would give us y to the negative 2 over 1 times x is x plus the outside term times a negative z cubed over y cubed. So we'll have 5x to the fifth y times negative z cubed over 1 times y cubed or just y cubed. Now let's go ahead and simplify this and when we simplify let's write all of our exponents as positive exponents. Usually they'll ask you to write it in some form, like all the variables in the numerator or all the exponents positive or all the exponents negative. This one, let's write all the exponents as positive exponents. So let's change 5x to the 7th. Well, first let's simplify. We have x to the 7th over x. That would just be 5x to the 6th. And then we put the y to the negative 2 in the denominator, y squared. And then next, we can simplify the y's. We'd have y over y cubed or just cancel that out and make this a y squared. And so now we'll have minus, move that negative in front of the z cubed up front, minus 5x to the fifth z cubed over y squared. 
and we can leave it like that. We have common denominators here, so I guess we could simplify that, add them together, but I don't think it's that important that we do that for this type of problem. And so we'll leave them as two individual fractions with common denominators. Just remember when you expand, you multiply the outside term by the two terms on the inside. And then like on this one, we used our product rule for exponents to simplify within each expression after we did the multiplication or expansion. Parts B and C of this lesson have to do with solutions to equations. Now a big part of algebra and, and being good at algebra has to do with further applications in the sciences and engineering and mathematics. Now that applies especially to people who are thinking of going into the sciences or engineering or mathematics. If you're not thinking you want that as a major, then the application for everybody of algebra is that it teaches thinking and problem solving skills. And those you can apply in life in any situation. And so this is basically practice problem solving. The skills you develop here in algebra, you can use those in life. You may not even think about it that you're doing it just because you've done them so many times in algebra. But if you think about it 10 years from now, you might recognize, oh, I'm setting up this problem that I have and I'm solving it like I do algebra problems. Now in algebra, when we have a problem, there are usually certain rules that we use to help us solve the problem. It, they're kind of like tools. We could think of them as tools. Like if you needed to fix a flat on your car. If you didn't have the right tools, then it would be hard to fix that flat. In the same way in algebra, if you're trying to solve an equation, if you don't know how to solve that, if you don't know what tools that you can use, it's going to be really hard to solve that equation. And two of the main tools that you use in solutions of algebraic equations are the addition rule and the multiplication division rule. Maybe you remember those as the additive property of equality and the multiplicative property of equality. Why don't we just do a problem to review those two rules. So look at practice problem C. 6x minus 3 equals 8. We want to solve that for x. So the tools that we use to solve for that problem are the ad addition rule. We usually do that first. Then the multiplication division rule. Addition rule, that means we add the same value to both sides. That doesn't change the equation. It just changes the way it looks. And our goal is to solve for x. So we need to get x by itself. Anytime you see a problem that says solve this, then remember your goal is to isolate x or isolate whatever the variable is. So the first step we can do to isolate x is to add 3 to both sides. We add it to both sides. It does not change the equation. It just changes the way it looks. So 6x equals 11. Now, our next step is to divide both sides by 6, and then we will have x isolated. So we divide both sides by 6, and then we get x equals 11 over 6. We'll just leave it as an improper fraction right now. x equals 11 6. That's our answer. We can always check our work to make sure we did it right by substituting back into the original equation. 6 times 11 over 6 minus 3 equals 8. And so the 6's would cancel there and we'd have 11 minus 3 which is 8. So we know we did that problem correctly. Notice how I did that problem. I have the equation written out. So any problem that you do, that's how you should do them. Write the equation down first and then you have a pattern basically to follow to help you solve it. Now there's something else I talk about in lesson 4 and that's about change sides and change signs. It's like a shortcut to the addition rule. Let's just rewrite this problem. 6x minus 3 equals 8. And when you think of change sides, change signs, just think about what we did there with the addition rule. We added 3 to both sides to get 6x by itself. And we could just do a shortcut and think 6x equals 8 plus 3. We changed the side that negative 3 was on, so we changed its sign. That's the same thing that you're doing with the addition rule. The addition rule though that explains why you did it or how you got a positive 3 on the other side. This change sides change signs idea that just is a shortcut and to understand why you did it you have to go back to the addition rule. 
Now that you're in Algebra 2, the problems will be getting a little more complex, so you want to find shortcuts to your methods. And so that rule there, change sides, change signs, that applies for constants. Numerical values that are not like a coefficient of another variable. Now that coefficient of x, we could make another rule for that that's not in here, but we could think change sides invert. So if we think of that, change sides invert, we could just say x equals 11 over 6. If we change the coefficient of x to the other side, we invert it, we put it on the bottom. We know that because of the multiplication division rule. We multiply or divide both sides of an equation by the same non-zero number. It does not change the equation. It just changes the way it looks. And so a shortcut on that is if we change sides, we invert. That's only for coefficients of the variable, numbers that are a factor of the variable. Constants, we apply the addition rule or the shortcut change sides change signs. Coefficients, we apply the multiplication division rule or change sides invert. Let's apply our change sides, change signs, and then change sides invert shortcuts to doing another problem. And so in practice problem D, we see some parentheses there, and so that tells us we need to expand first. Let's get rid of the parentheses. We have an equation here we're trying to solve. There's one variable in there, x. And so remember, our goal ultimately is to isolate x. So to do that, we've got to get rid of those parentheses first. On the left, we multiply on the inside by 3. 3 times 1 fifth would just be 3 fifths. 3 times negative 1 fourth, that would be negative 3 fourths x. That's equal to negative times negative 3x is 3x. And then negative times a 3, that's a minus 3. Okay, now let's go ahead and get the x's by themselves. And the way we can do that, let's move the 3x over to the, to the left and the 3 fifths to the right using our change sides, change signs rule. And so we'll have minus 3 fourths x minus 3x is equal to negative 3 minus 3 fifths. Now let's simplify this. On the left we would have negative 3 and 3 fourths x. We want to write that as an improper fraction. When we're solving an equation like this, we always write fractions as improper fractions. So 3 and 3 fourths, that would be equal to 15 over 4. And it's negative 15 over 4 times x. And then on the right we have negative 3 minus 3 fifths. That would give us a negative 18 over 5. So now we have a coefficient of x on the left and then a constant on the right. Change sides invert would be our next step. And so we'll say x is equal to negative 18 over 5. And then we're going to invert 15 over 4 and I'll multiply it. So that would be negative 4 over 15. Now let's go ahead and simplify where we can. The 18 and the 15, those have a 3 in common. And so we could end up with a 6 over a 5. And so that's going to be negative times negative. It's positive 24 over 25. Positive 24 25ths is our answer. Now if you are not comfortable with using change sides, change signs, and then change sides, invert. If you're not comfortable with using those rules, just use the addition rule and the multiplication division rule as you have been doing. Whichever way works best for you, and best means the least number of careless mistakes. So in any problem that you do, whether it's an algebra problem or a problem like changing the tire in your car, you want to do it as quickly as possible and with the least amount of mistakes. Okay, well that's all for lesson four.